Hey everyone, I'm Terry G. Thanks a lot for stopping by. Guess what happened this week? I got myself a new car. Well, not a new new car. 2019 RAV4. I love it. I, it's just one of those gifts from sobriety. I've saved for it for like 10 years, believe it or not. When I got divorced, I started saving for a new car because I was going to need a new car soon. In my other car I've had for 12 years, I wore the damn thing right out. And the wreckers came to get it today and I got myself a new RAV4 and I just love it. And that's one of the gifts of sobriety. Material things do come back to us in sobriety. We get bigger and better things, believe it or not, because we're not always spending our money on alcohol. Myself, I spent all my money on alcohol all the time, every week, every weekend, every day of the week was always going to feed my addiction and I had no money for rent, food, automobiles, whatever it is, there is no cash. So I'm grateful to be sober today I really am. A new set of wheels is, is really nice. I'm 61, it's the best car I've ever had in my life. What I wanna talk about today, I wanna to talk about, I've named this video 180 Degrees of Separation. And the reason I've named it this is because basically that's what's happened to me when I was actively drinking. And maybe you can relate to this and I bet you can. Myself, when I was a young fella, I had a lot of chaos in my life, learning disabilities, a lot of anger issues. Even before I picked up the booze, I was in really bad shape. I really was. Emotionally and mentally, I was in bad shape. I didn't even know it. I was always in survival mode, you know, fight or flight. So in those days, self-esteem, self-awareness, self-worth, all those things weren't big on the agenda. It was just survival was big on the agenda. And I was a kid, and this all happened before I was 13 years old. And when I was 13 years old, I picked up the booze and started drinking, and I started drugging. I did cocaine, I did a number of drugs, but this is an alcohol channel, so we're only gonna talk about alcohol, and I did a large amount of alcohol. So when I sobered up, believe me, when I sobered up, I came into uh, AA, I went to AA for the first time when I was 28 years old, I only stayed for a bit, and I finally, you know, got it sort of thing when I was 31 years old. It took me one year, it took me basically three years to get one year of sobriety. And when I look back, I say to myself, what was going on with me in early sobriety? Well, there was a lot of things going on. You know, I had cop charges, assault charges, you know, debt, debt, debt it, uh, creditors, all that sort of thing. Those things were going on. But when it came to myself, it felt like I was having this internal war all the time a mental war going on that I had to sort of keep at keep at rest, you know, soothe myself. And then I had the outside world going on and it was kind of like a battle, you know. It was kind of like I was always in fight mode or flight mode in early sobriety. It wasn't easy for me. And one of the major reasons that I came up with when I look back through my journals and everything is that when it comes to a dysfunctional life, before you drank, a difficult life, and addiction itself to alcohol and becoming an alcoholic, over time, what's happened is that our lives, you know, it's almost like there's two of me. There's the real Terry G and there's the other Terry G. And alcohol addiction and crummy childhood has slowly separated me from myself, you know, slowly. The more I drank, the more I drugged, the, the longer, Separate it, separate it, separate it, separate it. So when I sobered up, there was the true Terry that was kind of hidden. And then there was the false Terry that was kind of the childhood hurts, the addiction, the trauma, the pain, the guilt, the shame. There was that guy also, right? So when I sobered up, I had this big internal conflict going on and because of that, my life was like bumper cars. I was always in conflict. I was having problems. I was fighting with everybody. I was explosive. I couldn't sleep. I couldn't hold a job. A lot of things. You know, one of the main reasons was is because I didn't know myself. I didn't know myself. I was making all kinds of mistakes thinking they were the right ones. I didn't know my feelings. I didn't know my needs and wants. I didn't know a boundary. If you threw it in front of me, I didn't know anything about myself. And not knowing myself was terrible. It was painful. It was excruciating what the heck was going on. I had to go into therapy for like 10 years. I had to work my program double time 
just to hold on to my sobriety because I said to myself in early sobriety, before I went into sobriety, that I don't care what it takes, I'm cleaning this mess up. And the mess is I'm looking in the mirror at the mess and that's me. I'm the mess and I need to fix that. I need to get that under control. And that's why in program, they talk about being honest, being honest with ourselves because honesty is great glue to help us start bringing ourselves back together. When we're angry, we think about why we're angry. Is it because we're hurt? We start getting in touch with our emotions. We start understanding our emotions. We start doing things. Action is very important. Start doing things in our lives. Start understanding what we like in life. Going to counseling, understanding why we think and feel like that. They're all things that start bringing us back together. Our false self and our true self. It starts bringing us back together as one, as one. Doing the steps, the 12 steps, doing the fourth, the fifth, the sixth, the seventh, the character defects, the shortcomings, making amends, making an amends list, step eight. Conscious contact with a higher power. Higher power, prayer and meditation is a really great way to help us help ourselves identifying our, with ourselves. Slowing down in life when things are terrible and listening to that little internal voice that's saying, you know, Terry G, maybe you should get some sleep. Understanding, I know that I need lots of sleep and I know that, that's getting to know myself. And also accepting ourselves from our negative, you know, the good, the bad, the ugly. Accepting ourselves for what we are. Loving all of us, not just part of us. Not just the part that we show the world. The part that we don't show the world. Loving ourselves when we make mistakes. Parenting ourselves. Rejoicing in our accomplishments. Small or large, rejoicing. Taking responsibility when we are wrong, when we've made a mistake. That is another thing of self-discovery. Taking responsibility for our lives. You know, telling somebody that we screwed up, apologizing, you know, step 10 sort of thing. But also with ourselves. When we make mistakes, forgiving ourselves is about self-acceptance. We need to accept ourselves as a whole, who we are. The good, the bad, the ugly, our past, present, you know, that kind of stuff. And slowly, over time, it all comes back together. It really does. We come back together as a whole, but we need to work on it. And we need to be honest, willing, and take action, and take risks to help ourselves start identifying with ourselves. Journal journaling, is another great way of starting to understand ourselves. Talk to ourselves. What is going on? How you're feeling? How you're thinking? Talk to your sponsor. Talk to your therapist. And eventually, over time, you will start understanding yourself. Your battle with yourself, with me, settles down. And I can take on the world easier. A lot of the negativity in early sobriety, a lot of the conflict, a lot of it was caused by me. It was caused by me. And understanding that is a really important factor in rebuilding a harm, a harm, I can't even pronounce the word, I, I, a life that is calm and we have some harmony around our environment. Understanding ourselves, looking after ourselves. I could go on and on and on about this, but self-acknowledgement, self-awareness, Self-acceptance is the key to a great life. I don't care how much money you have. I don't care how much wealth you have or whatever is going on in your life. If we can't accept ourselves for who we are and what we are, we will never be content with our lives. Never. I don't care if you live in a castle and you're going out with the prettiest woman or the most handsome dude. I don't care you're not going to be content with your life. You're going to be miserable and you're not going to appreciate what you have. You're not. And that's the truth because you know why? Because I've had it all and I've lost it all. 
And self-acceptance is the constant. Self-awareness is the constant thing that keeps me content and happy with my life. Okay? So, I hope I made sense because this is Terry G's point of view. This is a real alcoholic with a tough journey of recovery, one day at a time, point of view of it. It's hard to get sober. It really is. It's hard to get on the road to recovery. But I'm gonna tell you something. What else are you gonna do? Remain drinking? Remain doing that kind of stuff? Screwing your life up? Making a mess? You're still gonna become 30 and be an alcoholic. Or you can become 30 and be sober, at least trying to build your life and having a great life. It's totally up to you. You can be 60 like my age and still be a raging lunatic alcoholic. Or you can be 60 my age and have a content life and be a non-drinker and be free and clear of alcohol one day at a time. You, you can be that, it's your choice. It really is. When we enter recovery, we start having that choice. Either we can still stay sober, sober or go back to the old crazy, crazy life. The crazy life may seem easier, but it's a lot more difficult. Believe, believe me, you know, it really is, okay? Thanks a lot for stopping by. My name is Terry G. And the G is actually my middle name, Gerald. My name is Terry G. This is an alcohol-free life channel where we learn to live sober one day at a time. You want to Can you please subscribe to our channel, my channel and take another second and hit that like button. Remember, sobriety, being sober, is freedom. It's freedom. No more chains, no more shackles from the alcohol. No more of that. It's freedom. We can be free of alcohol and have a great, big, purposeful, wonderful, loving, caring life. Guarantee it. You know why? Because I always say that. Because it's happened to me. God bless. Ciao for now. See you later, alligator.